would say, wow. <laughs> well, Bernie and I have been friends for a long time. We started this thing with Bob Proctor, as I'm sure Bob said to you, and, and uh, we dreamt that we could be here someday, and then each of us went our individual ways, and suddenly we're back, and I've got goosebumps uh, standing before you. It's an honor, and I'm thankful, and, and I hope to uh, deliver the goods for you. If you're ready, everyone say, touch yourself at chest level, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Shake your neighbor's shoulder, say, I see you're ready. And we'll go on to the screen if they'd flip that on, if they would, please. Because this is exciting for me. We've got a lot to cover in a very brief time, and that's as much warm-up. Jack did a good job doing the humor about our stuff, right? Yeah. Hey, did he talk? do any chicken soup stories? Yeah. Seeing as I wasn't here, I was, you know, coming back to China, to Japan, to Hawaii to here. Um, I um, missed whatever he said, so I don't, I just do one story. Did he do one from our expectant mother soul? We, we do, as Jack said, we've got 147 books. Most of them are bestsellers. Some of them, you know, like where I was in Singapore, you know, we're number one in Singapore for the last 28 weeks in a row, so you'd never see that unless you go to Singapore. But uh, we did a chicken soup for the expectant mother soul. Because, I mean, it's 90 million newborns a year. I thought it'd be a perennial, long-term, great market, and it has been. We have a story about a four-year-old who's a thumb sucker. Parents have done everything. They've wrapped it, coated it, mercurial combed it, taped it, nothing works. They're off to church. Dad said, boy, you keep sucking your thumb. Here's what's going to happen. Your stomach's going to expand, then it's going to explode. He sits in a pew next to the woman who's nine months pregnant. <laughs> All the way through the service, he's looking at her. After the final amen, he walks up to her and says, I know what you've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of chicken soup stories, but that's not today's talk. If you could hit the... Um, PowerPoint so I can see it or put it up on screen. We're talking about mega attraction. That is not my PowerPoint. I don't know whose PowerPoint that is, but that's not mine. It's beautiful, whatever it is. And you guys don't get to see it, so I can just keep vamping until they find mine. We had it before you got here, it was working. How's that? Did Jack tell you the story about, uh, oh, did we not? Do I need to come down then? Thank you. Okay. No, we're one, one more back. There we go. Okay, now if we could hit it. Okay, good. I love this first slide that I did for you all. It's called Mega Attracting. Oh, good, it's there. I'm going to teach you how to have unlimited. How many of you are ready to have unlimited? Everyone touch yourself one more time. Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Touch your neighbor's index finger right and left. Say, I see you're ready. How many of you have seen The Secret? Could I see a raise of hands? Okay, and, and Proctor's in it, and, and Jack's in it, and it is, it's raised our book sales 16% in this year, and they're already phenomenal, so we're thankful. But what I want to do is talk to you about the attractor factor. Everyone say the attractor factor. Because what happens is that here's what you want to attract. When I was coming back on a plane yesterday from Hawaii, I thought, well, what is it? If you could have anything, some of you don't want much fame on a scale of, you know, one to, uh, or 360, because that's what we're going to teach you. You know, most of you say, well, maybe I want 90 degrees of fame or 180, but you can have the whole enchilada and still be invisible when you want if you know how to do it. Would that be good or would that be good? In other words, I can go most places, and I learned a long time ago when I was getting my doctorate with Bucky Fuller. How many of you know who Buckminster Fuller was? The guy who finished Einstein's Unified Field Theory, 2,000 major inventions, you know, 40 books. Got a posthumous Nobel Prize for fullerenes, but Bucky showed us how to be visible when you need to be visible and then be invisible. He showed us how to expand and contract beingness, so I'll show you that. Fortune. How many of you would be willing to accept a fortune? Could I show raise hands? Well, my position is going to be today that you want an enlightened, enlightened wealth. Everyone say enlightened wealth. <laughs> that means you come from abundance. Everyone say, I come from, touch yourself, say, I come from abundance. <laughs> respectfully most of us come from scarcity and you got to look at that because the world teaches that there's not enough and it's a paradigm shift because as long as you're in insufficiency you stay in insufficiency so it's got to be a thought mindset before it could be a money set before it can be a lifestyle set point of your temples go hmm that's interesting <laughs> and the only way you get it is backwards so I'm going to start at the end and say you got to be philanthropic first you got to decide what you're going to give away before you can have it because you don't get to keep anything, because we're going to teach the infinity sign. Everyone make the infinity sign in the air, if you would, please. And as you're looking forward, take your right hand and say, the right-hand side is a residual income, everyone. Yeah. 
that means you get paid again and again and again and again. I mean, in other words, Jack and I, right here in Culver City, could have spent three years working to get paid once. That's a job, a just over broke position is an acronym. I want you to have a real MBA, a millionaire's bank account. Everyone say, I accept. I accept. Now, it's a paradigm shift. They happen fast or slow. Which way? Fast. Everyone click your figures. It's going to happen that fast. All you got to do is accept, but then permanentize it. Give it fixed to your thought, and you got to come from the end result. You can't think about it, wrong preposition. You can't think of it, I'm going to be a millionaire. You've got to be there in your mind so that your whole subconscious juxtaposes it and it has intertwined beingness until you and it are one. In other words, when Jack and I wrote the book, we immediately put ourselves on, we, we interviewed the 101 best-selling authors. Scott Peck was the guy who had made $40 million, 12 years, road less travel. We waited out his name after we interviewed the great psychiatrist. We put in chicken soup in the soul. We put it on the mirror at my house, Jack's house, my office, Jack's office. We owned it for two years before he got it, even though 144 publishers all said, hit the road, Jack. And I said, look, it's okay if you don't like him. <laughs> but I'm a really nice guy. <laughs> didn't cut it. They didn't, they didn't see it, and a lot of them regret it now, and they're all good friends, and they come and talk about my bag of book marketing, which I'll talk to you about. Okay, so enlightened fortune means you've got to be abundant first. Everyone say, I am abundant. I am abundant. In Christian lore, John 10, 10, I have come that you might have life and have it, and most people think they're supposed to have bald tires in their car and be 12,000 bucks overline monthly in their credit cards, or 12,000 overline in their credit cards. That's the average American. Sick way to think. That's a whole problem with subprime is that we gave money away to people who didn't have a money consciousness without teaching them how to have financial consciousness first, then the money will come. If you get the money and don't have the consciousness, which is why I went bankrupt 34 years ago, I had a lot of money. I was making $2 million a year, but I pissed it all away because I didn't have any brain power. I'd been a rock star, and I thought, well, man, it's going to last forever. And new money is stupid money usually because it's not trained money, which is why most millionaires lose it the first three times. Does that make sense? And everyone take your hand and say, I'm shaking that silliness off. Because that's why you're in a great class like this, in a CEO space. Because once you get the mindset, the money set has to flow. But the mindset has got to be first. Signs follow. They don't proceed. Okay, so you've got to be abundant first. Second of all, you've got to create massive value. Everyone say massive value. We had read a thousand stories to find one. I'm sure Jack told you all that. Then we did it like a totem pole at, at uh, Indianapolis 500. And, you know, people say, well, you didn't use my story. Well, it didn't qualify to the readership. Like when we were number one and number two book for 58 weeks in a row, chicken one and a second helping, what happened is in a sigmoid curve, Bernie told me to just hit at a high level. Is that okay? Sigmoid curve, you're all taught in business schools that it goes down and it accelerates up, then it plateaus out and flattens out. What, that isn't the way it really works. Most people have one sigmoid curve at a time. You need to stack them. Everyone say stack them. Yeah. If you want to make multiple millions, we had chicken one, then we did chicken two. Then the thing that really hit was chicken soup for the teenage soul. And our publisher said, you boys have missed it. I got teenagers. They buy CDs, concert tickets, and clothes. They're not buying your book. We sold 19 million the first year. I sort of thought it was going to sell. <laughs> but we interviewed or had 12,000 kids read it, and they did all the stories because we were online at the time. And they said the stories we want most are like how to handle abuse if I've been abused because half of all women, unfortunately, in America are abused, which I'm here to stop because I only got daughters, Right? And then we're going to stop it in the whole world because 500 million uh, Arabic women have been mutilated, which is just obscene to my mind. And I'm in Arabia a lot of the time this last year. It's just not okay. They just are running on anti-Diluvian stuff that we've got to eradicate. It's just bad input gets bad output, which Bob showed you the stick man. Yeah or no? So anyhow, the, the point is we're going to have to create massive value. Say massive value. Massive value. And then we're going to say you've got to leave a legacy because how good could it be? And then, how many of you could stand to open up your heart chakra, your heart energy? Take your hand over your heart, make a heart over your heart. Say, I'm just opening it up. <laughs> and then the question is, pretend you've got a giant dial in front of you. Say, how much can I turn up the volume? Everyone, how much can I? <laughs> now, you had our girlfriend, Lisa Nichols. She's already spoken here, right? Yeah. Isn't she just pure love on fire? Yeah. Is she a cutie pie? Yeah. 
She and I just talked to the biggest black church. Well, we've done a couple of them, like T.D. Jakes and that, but we were just in Chicago, and I brought 5,000. Everyone said, you can't outsell yourself. So remember, you just heard Bernie say, I'm here to challenge myself, but challenge you. And that's for life. So I said, well, I'd like to see if we can't outsell the Bible. So we did a chicken soup of the soul Bible. We've got little stories to get you into the big story. We sell 70,000 a week at Walmart. So they go. So I thought, well, that was good. But now I'm going to show you a brand new book series that I've got where we're going to sell a billion books in a day. I'm going to show you how to do it. Because here's what our friend Emerson said when he was at Harvard. Emerson said, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one. I don't want to talk about what I've done. I want to talk about what I'm doing and where I'm going to go. And you say, well, that's got risk to it. Of course, because we may blow it. But what if I sold a half billion in a day? More than anyone else. Still cool, right? And understanding, some of you say, well, what has that got to do with my business? All business is the same business. 80% of all business is the same. Only 20% of the flourishes are different. Everyone point to your temples, two fingers, say, I got it. I got it. So you want to maximize your